Hey look, no green screen. Check this out. We're getting downright forensic about tungsten today. How to grind it, how to sharpen it, what the results are when you fire it off in different ways. I'm going to show you all about that. The reason why? Well recently we've been doing all the TIG classes at the shop. Now you click on the video cards and see all that stuff or in the description below it'll tell you all about it. But as far as the TIG Simple series is concerned, this is a great way for me to really investigate what it takes to sharpen tungsten, how it is done the best and all the rest of that good stuff to answer all of your questions only on this episode of the Fabrication Series. Alright, so we're going to start with 330 seconds or 2.4 millimeter E3 purple tungsten. Then it's all about 57 millimeters or two and a quarter inches uh, long. They're all cut to about the same length. Neither one of them is sharpened, but I did take a little off the edge. Now I'm going to go about a two finger gap when I chuck this up into the drill. It's just to kind of normalize it uh, and try to, you know, I don't know, get rid of any variances if there are any uh, when it comes to sharpening. We'll throw the uh, bench grinder, turn it on here, and this one's actually been used before. Keep track of time, you see the clock there, when it's in red, we're actually grinding. And uh, as soon as we're done, it'll go green and tell us exactly how long it took to sharpen that tungsten. So, normal pressure, just getting it sharpened pretty much the way that we normally do. I'm going to stop when we get to a nice point. And it's about just shy of 14 seconds. So that 28 on the right there, that's actually my frame counter. So there's 30 frames in one second, so it's just shy of 14. So. Bench grinder down, let's use an actual tungsten sharpener because I'm borrowing this too, just the same as I borrowed the uh, bench grinder. So this was actually sped up and of course I'm not going to chuck it up in the drill there because that little diamond wheel gets kind of hot. So uh, once we get done with this, we have uh, just over 31 seconds to get it to a decent, uh, decent point there. And in all honesty, I probably could have gone a little bit more. So two down, two to go. Let's try the grinder. Now, of course, they do always say use a brand new or dedicated uh, cutting tool for whatever you're going to use, but you know, let's, uh, this is just kind of, you know, we'll, don't worry about it. We'll just put it that way. So we'll check this up, same two finger gap, and of course, this had to be sped up as well just to do it. But again, you know, I mean, obviously, this is dirty, and I know some of you guys are just going to tear my head off about that, but. You know, like I said, don't worry about it. It's kind of compare and contrast. So just shy of 20 seconds to get that one uh, sharpened up here. And finally, we uh, usually see a disc or a belt sander. Now, uh, I'll be honest with you, my machine here uh, is, I think I sharpened one too many tungstens on it because uh, my disc actually split and it catastrophically failed. So we'll just use the disc side. This is a uh, 36 grit disc and we'll fire it off. That was actually, no kidding, just shy of five seconds to get that sharpened. That's probably the fastest way I've ever seen to sharpen a tungsten. That's pretty cool. So let's get in kind of close and actually take a look at these here. We've got our bench grinder on the left, tungsten grinder, flat disc, disc sander. Now this is going to be the exact same order as they're always going to appear on the screen throughout this video. So let's take a close look here. Our uh, bench grinder, uh, a good, good nice sharp point on it, has a very heavy grain goes in line with the tungsten, which is uh, you know, it's pretty typical. Uh, you know, I'm curious to see how that works. Then we'll go to the tungsten grinder. Now this has the same inline grain to it, but a lot finer, and I didn't get that great of a point on it. Now this is still fractions, or a very, very small amount. Then compare that to the flap disc, there is almost no grain on it whatsoever, and uh, the way I sharpen is just a little bit more blunt. Now the uh, disc sander has a nice helical grind into it, and that's kind of neat, and I want to see how that actually compares. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to fire up my Everlast Power TIG 255 EXT, and it has a unique feature that I'm going to use on it, which is the spot timer. So as soon as I get it up to uh, set up, we're going to go on DC welding, of course. We're going to weld some coupons. Set my spot timer, toggle over to the menu for the spot timer control. I'm going to go exactly five seconds. So what happens is when I actually set up the amperage, which I'm going to start this off at 10 amps because that's a typical low point in the machines, I'm going to push the pedal, it's going to fire off exactly five seconds, and we'll, uh, you know, there's going to be no variance in that one. So full power, five seconds the whole way at maximum amperage, which I set to 10 amps on these coupons. Let's line them up and fire them off. Same order the whole way through and we'll take a look here. Now after analyzing this just a little bit here, starting on the left with the bench grinder, uh, when I looked at it really carefully at all of the footage here, uh, I noticed that there was not a lot of focus. Now it did fire off right away and the arc was very stable, but it could not actually focus and pinpoint 
uh, the actual place. So it looks like all it did was just sit there and create this nice little heat ring around it, which was, uh, that's kind of unique. It wasn't really expected. I was thinking it was going to pinpoint and just fire right away and uh, start digging its way through. Now the tungsten grind, now this was kind of interesting because I didn't get that really fine, fine tip on it. I mean, maybe it's about, I don't know, 15, 20 thousandths of an inch blunt and not to a, you know, almost perfect point. But uh, when you actually take a look at it, the footage shows that it was not, uh, it did not focus uh, immediately. It kind of wandered a little bit, but as soon as it did focus, the result on it, you can see it was very pinpointed and started to actually, uh, you know, like maybe even melt or penetrate into the actual metal. I mean, it's only, you know, a small amount, but the heat affected zone around it is also very minimal as well. Now we compare that to the flap disc. Now this was kind of a, it, it had a really nice point on it, but no grain and it was not as sharp or as uh, it, uh, it was a little more blunt than it was uh, narrow or a little wider sharpening than it was narrow sharpening so it didn't really match the rest of them but uh, it had no focus on it at all it didn't wander much it just uh, straight up just did not focus so it just kind of sat there like uh, stupid and uh, didn't really do anything now this is another one of those areas where I guess I just made uh, you didn't take a minute to double check but my torch height or my arc length was really high when it came down to the actual disc sander so the interesting thing that we have to look at here is it did focus after, I mean it did wander a little bit, but it did focus and once it did it started digging in and it started to look almost like it was with the tungsten setup. Uh, they look almost identical except it took too long to actually focus in and my arc length was high. So I'm willing to bet that uh, the, the actual uh, tungsten itself uh, when sharpened with the disc center and that helical grind is going to be actually kind of similar to the tungsten grind. So, but either way, that's just at 10 amps. Uh, it's really tough for a lot of machines to focus in on 10 amps. So I'm gonna reset the machine. I'm gonna go up to 100 amps. And then of course, I'm gonna verify again that it's all set the same. I'm gonna line all three of them up and fire them all up again. Five seconds a piece, and here's the results. Now this is kind of interesting as well. Uh, now the bench grinder piece on the left, you notice how it just, it immediately just fired right in there and it's ready to go. Uh, that would be kind of the heat signature here that it's dark and gray and you see a whole lot of uh, metal that actually came up and bubbling. It looks like it was actually fired at twice, which is really unique, but it's a little bit sloppy. But the reason why is because we had absolutely no movement within that five seconds. So this actually fired in like almost immediately and it was like, okay, we're ready to weld, here we go. Now we put that up to the tungsten grind and this might be just part of the reason why is that, that dull point on there where I didn't get a nice sharpened point. It looks like it was just about ready to get rolling before we actually started going. I mean, it looks like it was right there ready to roll. And then we combine it to the actual flap disc grind. This is the actual grind that I'm used to. Uh, it's It was also ready to roll and it was starting to get pretty hot. Um, which is actually uh, kind of surprising. So I mean, it's like I said, it's uh, looks like it was good, looks like it was ready to go, and then we come around to the disc sander yet again, and you notice it was it was a lot like the uh, the tungsten grinder uh, result. I mean, it's 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 very very similar, just about exactly the same. It just didn't get a whole lot of heat in it. Now I did notice again that the uh, there was some arc wandering on the uh, the higher gaps or the greater distances between the two of them. So it was actually the the tungsten grind and the uh, disc grinder, or the disc sander grind, they both had a uh, little bit higher than normal arc length on them, while the other two were just like right on top of it, like very, very steady, tight arc length. So that might have had something to do with it. But seriously though, I've already decided that there's going to be a follow-up on this video. Now the reason why is because there were a few different uh, mixed results in there that I think that I could actually iron out and do a lot better job if I follow up. But I also decided that I really want your guys' input on this one. So tell me, what do you think about these ways that I sharpen the tungsten? Uh, what do you got that are other ways that you could possibly sharpen your tungsten? Which ways do you like to do it? What kind of results? do you see and maybe you find other ways that I could try it out this is kind of like a response to uh, let's see what you guys come up with and I'm gonna give them a shot I really want to actually try this out so your uh, participation is highly encouraged now that's gonna wrap it up for this one don't forget to check out all the other videos that we got popping up on the screen here and also down in the description below for the tick simple series playlist the whole works I really hope you guys have already subscribed and if you haven't please do so now because we got a whole lot more coming up but I'll see you guys on the next episode